Welcome back to Red or Green. Thanks for joining us today. We are going to prepare another way or an alternate way to make red chili. So last video we showed you how to make red chili from a red chili powder. And today we're going to make something called chili caribe. So what that means is that we're going to take these red chili pods, we're going to boil them in some hot water to soften them up a little bit. Then we're going to put them in the blender and blend them up with a little bit of water, garlic, salt, and then we're going to make a chili sauce the way we did the last time. So bear with me, we will get around to making some great dishes with these chili sauces. But I want to show you how to do um, red and green chili a couple of different ways before we move on. So uh, that said, let's go ahead and get to it. What I have here are the red chili pods, and I'm going to break off the tops a little bit and take out a little bit of the seeds. If some of the seeds get in there, don't worry about that too much. I'm just going to take them off. And I, I bought these over at the fruit basket and they're, um, a lot of them already have the uh, tops off. So we're just going to go ahead and look through them and make sure we have what we need. So there, as you can see, there is a uh, top there and I'm going to pull that off. And some of the seeds are in there, and I'm just going to kind of pull the seeds out because I don't want all the seeds in there. Pull that off. Take some of the seeds out. Careful, make sure you wash your hands after this because they will burn after. Okay, so moving right along, we've got some boiling water here. And the reason we put them in boiling water is to soften up the chili um, so that when it goes into the blender, it'll blend up more, more easily. As you know, these are still the, the red chilies that we used um, from our last video. They're still a little soft, not quite ready, but I'm going to take one of them and I'm going to take off the top and blend it in with these chilies. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and add them into my boiling water. Some of the seeds got in there, that's okay, no worries. And we're going to let them boil for about five minutes. Now that the chili has softened, we're going to come in and pull the chili out. See, it's nice and soft. I don't want to boil it too much because then I'm going to boil all the flavor out of it. I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it directly into my blender. Nice and soft. And I'm going to allow the water to to cool off just a little bit because I want to use that same water to uh, blend up the, the chili here. So once it's cooled off, I'm going to take and pour this water. You want to give it at least five minutes. I'm not giving it that much time right now. But uh, take and pour some of this water in here. And just enough water to cover the chili. I'm not going to put too much. We want a good portion of chili to water ratio. Again, just enough to cover it. Okay, so with that, we're going to take one garlic clove and add that to our, our chili here. I'm going to cut it up because this is a, a large uh, garlic clove, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it up in a couple of pieces just so that it blends up easier. Three cloves. Okay. We're also going to add, I have half a teaspoon of salt, kosher salt. The kosher salt I like to use here because it, um, it's, it's a higher, um, it's a little bit thicker and it, it helps to blend the chili better. So now we're going to um, take and blend up our chili and see what it looks like. All right, so here we are, we've got our blender. And so we want to take take our towel, and uh, I'm going to take up, take this off because the water is still a little bit hot. I'm going to take the uh, top of the blender off and just cover it with my my dish towel here, so that uh, some of the steam can come out. And I'm going to blend it on uh, puree. And it does take a little bit of time, so you're going to have to be patient here. So we want a really smooth, silky chili here, or chili paste. So be patient. Okay, as you can see, it looks 
looks like it's uh, blending up really nicely. Okay, so from here, we are going to prepare our red chili sauce. Just like we did with the powder, this is, this is basically the same, um, taking the powder and making a sauce. Now you can use it directly from here, and a lot of people do. When I make chili caribe, I use it for specific things and for specific occasions. So uh, if I'm making tamales, I'm going to use the chili directly from here. I'm not going to make a sauce out of it, which means I'm going to put it with flour and, and oil and make a, a sauce. I'm going to use it directly from here for tamales. Or if you want to make some uh, adobada, what that means is like it's a marinated meat in red chili. And that red chili uh, will sit in uh, pork, typically. Um, carne adobada is made with pork, but you could use chicken, you could use turkey, whatever you choose if you don't eat pork. Some people don't eat pork. So um, in this case, we're gonna go ahead and make our chili sauce. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna prepare it the way we did the last time. So now that we've got our red chili blended, we took our pods, added some garlic, a, a garlic clove, a little bit of salt. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our red chili sauce. As I said before, um, you can use the sauce directly from here for things like your tamales. So you would add that directly to your cooked meat and then proceed to make your tamales and we'll do that in a future video. But um, one of the things that, that you can do at this point is you can make your sauce directly, make your roux and put the chili in directly. What I typically do is strain it because we've got a lot of some seeds, some coarse pieces of the red chili and so what we want to do is strain it and that's going to just give us a very smooth red chili so that we don't have a bunch of as you can see it's collecting all the seeds and, and stuff there that way we don't have a bunch of uh, stuff I don't I don't like those little red chili pieces you know when I'm eating chili and I have to pull them out well, I do that I don't know if you do but I do and so I'm just going to strain it, and this is what it looks like when it's strained. It's nice and smooth, and there's no seeds or anything. It's up to you if you want to do this. Some people just go ahead and cook it directly from there. I like to do this because it, uh, again, it makes the, the sauce nice and smooth. However, if you've got a, a Vitamix or a Ninja really high-powered, blender you can probably avoid having to do this because it'll take all that basically it'll mash all that stuff up so you don't have to worry about it but for today's video I'm gonna go ahead and strain it and take some of that out and then I'm gonna strain some more and this is a bit of a process it's kind of tedious but it's worth it to me because I want it to be nice and smooth and you can use a a bigger strainer if you have one. <laughs> I do have one, I just haven't pulled it out. It smells really good. It's like um, a little smoky and hot. As we, as I was blending it up, I was choking a little bit because the chili's pretty hot. But that's a good thing. Okay, so now we have a really smooth sauce going on here. As you can see, there's no red chili pieces and it's nice and smooth and so we're gonna go ahead and make our sauce. So I'm gonna start with two tablespoons of canola oil and two tablespoons of flour just like we did before with the uh, red chili powder that recipe that we made. The cast iron does hold the heat as I said before it does hold the heat quite a bit so you want to keep it on medium to low so your flour isn't burning. All right, and again, I'm gonna cook this just for about a minute. I wanna cook that flour taste out. It looks a little brown because I use whole wheat flour, but um, you don't wanna brown it, but uh, it's okay if you use regular flour or whole wheat flour, whatever you choose. 
Okay, so I showed you how to strain it. And now we're going to go ahead and add our chili in. So I went ahead and added uh, some of the chili from the blender without straining it just to show you what it, what it will look like, but it's, it is best to have it strained or if you have a high powered blender like a Vitamix or a Ninja blender, um, you'll, you, won't have, you won't have to strain it. So it's kind of a pain, but I do it again because I don't have one of those blenders and um, and I like it a little bit smoother, but I did go ahead and add this for just for today's video so you can see what it looks like. I'm gonna get my whisk. I wanna make sure that everything is nice and smooth. Okay, so everything is blending up really well here and it's starting to boil. And as you remember, when we're cooking red chili, we wanna, we want it to come up to a boil before we add any more water or our uh, more salt and our oregano. Remember, you've got to put a little bit of oregano in your red chili. You don't have to, but I do. It, uh, it complements the red chili really well. And so at this point, I'm going to take it, I'm going to add a little bit of water, my oregano, um, and I'm, I'm adding a very small amount, maybe an eighth of a, te a teaspoon. And I'm going to crush it up in my hands because I don't want big pieces in there some dried oregano, and I'm using Mexican oregano. So now I'm gonna add a little more water because even though we put water into the blender with the chili, it's gonna need more because I added flour and oil. And so we're gonna need to thin it out a little bit. And since it's boiling, we know that it's pretty thick. We do need some more, some more water in here. So I'm gonna add about a half a cup of water and then see what that looks like once it starts boiling. You want to keep this on about medium, medium to low. Again, I'm keeping it on medium to low because it's in the cast iron and it keeps the heat very well. You don't want it boiling over, going crazy, but uh, you want to make sure that uh, you keep it cooking. Remember, we want to cook this for about 20 minutes and then at that point it'll be ready to use to prepare your enchiladas or whatever you want to do with it at that point. Okay, so it has been boiling for about 20 minutes now. And so as you can see, it's this nice, smooth, beautiful red color. And um, I tasted it and I think it needs a little bit more salt. I'm gonna put just about a half a teaspoon of salt more. Of course, you want to taste it before you add any more salt. Just see if it's to your liking. And so it's this nice, beautiful red chili at this point. Okay, so now that the chili is done, I've added some to some fresh, uh, fresh pot beans that I made. And I'm going to try out this chili. It's pretty hot, so are the beans. Mmm. It's delicious. You have to make this recipe, it's so good. And definitely let me know how it worked for you. If, um, if it's complicated, you can always go back to the red chili powder or buy one of these to make it convenient. I do wanna, do wanna talk a little bit about some of the products out there. Now we, we made chili cutty with today. If you want a shortcut, you don't wanna make this at home because it's a bit time consuming. Um, you can certainly go out and buy it already prepared. Now this is a, a bueno red chili sauce that already has the flour, the, the oil, and is a prepared sauce. So you can purchase this and it's already prepared and you can um, not have to go through that whole process. Or um, this is another uh, brand that I found. Uh, personally, I like less ingredients. So if it's got ground up red chili, some water and a little bit of salt and a preservative. That's best for me. So this is where we started off. This was the um, us grinding up the, the chili with the water and garlic without preparing the sauce. 
So there's a couple of different options out there in a pinch. And I'll put, put a link down below so you can purchase any of these online if you'd like. We are going to uh, definitely move on to green chili next time. So I need to know if you like green chili or red chili more, or you like Christmas, what's your preference? And so um, as we do some more of these videos, um, I really want to hear from you. Please subscribe down below and tell me what kind of videos you want to see, uh, what kind of New Mexican dishes you want me to prepare. And we'll move on to that next episode. We're going to go ahead and move on to green chili. So again, bear with me. Once we've got these down, uh, you'll be able to make enchiladas, your burritos, whatever. You can use these sauces for whatever you want. So make sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Um, you'll find the link down below. Also, if you want to try and make this, I really want to hear if you made it at home and you think it's simple or if maybe I need to simplify things, um, the recipe will be included down below. I want to hear from you and see if you made this recipe and what you used it for. So have a great day. See you next time.